This episode of Toys on Tap is brought to you by Elite Sweets, the donut makers. Damn, they're good. You ever look in the mirror and just realize, man, I'm fat. I want to lose this fat. I did that back in September. I started a weight loss competition with my best friend. And we looked in the mirror and realized, man, this is the biggest we've ever been. And honestly, what it is, we ate too many donuts. That's all it was. Before we started the weight loss competition, did some Googling, trying to figure out where I wanted to go. And Elite Sweets was the brand. They came up. They've got three donuts that are so good. Chocolate, birthday cake, cinnamon, sugar. You do not want to miss them. They come shipped in a box that's refrigerated. Put them in the fridge. You can heat them up, grab them on the go. They're good cold, good hot. Oh, so good. I can tell you that I'm down 30 pounds. I'm excited about that. And it isn't without the help of Elite Sweets. You can find them on Instagram at elite.sweets. You can find them online at elitesweets.com. Also, if you go on and you purchase some of their donuts and you enter Abraham 15, that's A B R A H A M 1 5, you get 15% off your next order, which is dope. A B R A H A M 15, Abraham 15, boom. That's the code. So go on, buy the variety packs. You will not be sad for doing so. Those donuts are so damn good. What's up, man? Yo. Hey man, how are you? Collect a lot in the damn house. <laughs> oh, a little late, a little sweaty as usual. Hey, I'm here. That's I'm how here. we live our lives, man. Late <laughs> and sweaty. Late and sweaty. So we're gonna jump into it. These like art pieces that you throw out, they're insane. You're 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 like the you're one of the leading people in this art community for sure. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you much. And and you're giving me your time today. So what better thing to ask for right there? Between between making toys, this is the best way yeah. to spend my time anyways. So, so here we go. We're going to start right at the top. Sir Collect a Lot. Where's that name come from? Oh, it honestly comes from trying to think of the name. It came, <laughs> it came from just sitting there trying to think of this is before I, when I was just collecting too. When I, when I wasn't making toys, but I wanted to separate my personal Instagram from my toy Instagram of, of posting. Uh, I just don't think my friends and family in the real world are ready for some of my crazy suck Lord toys that I was posting. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. So I decided to make a, you know, also it was a better way to just separate, like getting to know other toy people on just a toy account. So I ended up making a new one, separate one and uh, start collect a lot. It was, and here we are. And it kind of, it, it worked because making toys, you know, it could be a collectible company. It could be some company that's making collectibles in the way that it could be a collector themselves. So it just worked out pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So you brought up such a good point that you separate the two lives that you have. I for yeah. sure do that. Like I don't have a personal account at all. And my name right. isn't even on my toy account. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just don't want people to be able to find me because I work with kids. So it takes yeah. one kid to Google me and it's just like... Right. I mean, I, I, I don't like, uh, I'll get, uh, people know like, Oh, this is your toy account. Every time, every once in a while that question comes up or, you know, my friends will be like, is this one of your toy friends? So there's, everyone knows <laughs> the se separation exists, but. I love that. That's the distinction. Is this one of your toy friends? Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it really yeah. Is. yeah. Well, it's tough because like, even other people. So there's no distinction that people make in their brain. So I was on a, an Instagram live with hella radical toys and we were joking around and he like, he cusses and smokes and I don't care. Like that's just, uh, yeah. Whatever. I was thinking I was on that for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, whatever you do, whatever you're going to do. But then we start talking about uh suck Lord's auction and the cum rag comes up. Oh yeah. And it's like, yeah my wife walks by and she's like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This is just what we talk about apparently. Yeah. And he, he, he made that so normal because that's who he is. He doesn't, you know, and his fans yeah. would respond to that and someone bought it and paid a lot of money for it. So yeah. it so, is what it is. Yeah. He normalized something that was like, 
I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Like, yeah. it and then was like, hey, this is still going to go to the highest bidder. And, and it you knew. broke my heart. Yeah. It broke my heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the outside, when I look at your uh, toy account, here's what it looks like. It looks like that you watch pop culture and you are just ready. So when something happens, it comes out immediately. <sighs> I try, I try to make that be the case for sure. Yeah. At least early on, that's what I, I love like weird internet culture. Even the first toys I was doing, I was digging into the mental archives of old shit that I had seen pre Twitter, just funny, like e-bombs world, like those yep. places where we would see memes before they actually existed of short clips or funny images. Um, and I thought that it was fun to bring those characters like actual people that existed in those things bring them to life i thought that was pretty funny and then people respond to that people that are are similar age to us they know who that is it's funny to them you don't have to do you know drake have i done a drake from state farm toy yeah i've yeah. done a drake from state farm toy but i love the obscurity of you know the internet so there's a lot of there's an infinite amount of work to do there thank you yeah and then like I, there's all like the other ones that I've seen, like Bernie and all those things. And it's like, just at the ready. Right. And I'm, uh, I'm on the other side where it's like, I still have to think and like process how I would even make that a figure. And by the time right. I'm done, it's over. I Yeah. The, you know, um, dog face, the dude yep. on the skateboard. So that was one that people were like, I think I did stay up all night to do it i think i did see that video going viral and i woke up maybe i just woke up super early the next morning and people that hadn't seen it the night before were probably seeing it the same time that they were seeing my toy which i think yep. got you know people were like okay how'd you how'd you do that otherwise i spend three weeks on a toy that should take me three hours though so it's not speed is not my friend but it you know, I do make an effort. If it's something that's super timely, I do love to get it out in front of people. Like, did you do the fly on uh, what's his faces? I didn't do a fly. Okay. I think some of them I just am. If as soon as I see one, it does take a lot out of my interest in doing it. And and that's nothing. To, I if if I've already started something and someone puts it out, I'm not gonna pull the plug on the project. But I think that if someone's got something before I start it, I I definitely try to get onto the next idea or I I have five toys going on at all times so it's, yeah it's it's almost a good thing when someone else does something and I can be like now do the toys that are half painted or that yeah. you painted but didn't do a card for or you made all these cards are you going to make a toy for that so I it all works out for me that if someone beats me to it I'll just keep on keep on to the next one yeah. So, okay. So you're talking, you, you're basically describing my workspace at home. It's like there's five or six toys constantly going. Nice. Uh, and you, from what we've talked about, cause we've messaged back and forth, you don't really do runs of things. No, I, I so I haven't, I've tried casting yeah. before I've, I've bought, um, you know, resin and I've made a few attempts to turn my, kitchen where I'm sitting right now into a little laboratory. Yeah. It just, it just doesn't, I'm not good at it and I don't have good patience for it. And I, like we were talking about, like that I love to turn an idea that I see into a toy in a few hours or a few days is kind of just the way that I like to produce art. So it's, you know, if it, I don't, I'm not against like coming up with an idea. I talked to a few people that, do casting and I'd love to combine forces there. I'd love to, uh, you know, I've done a couple of cards for people that were casting toys and yeah. that collaborative effort is awesome. I love that. But for me, I, I don't think I have the patience to do that. And the amount of time it would take me to create in that space. I think that I'd either the idea would have been lost on people that are going to be seeing it, or I just kind of lose the attention on it myself, which is yeah. kind of the bigger my bigger problem, which is why I have toys going on all the time. So, I mean, that's the collab. So I, I mean, I just said it, but we, I can't wait for ours to come out. I know. I'm so that's one of the five that I have going on. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) I'm stoked about it. So, but now that I know that you don't like, you're not a big fan of casting. That's a collab that I want to do with you. Cause I like, that's not my favorite thing to do. And I'm, but I, I, 
can enjoy figuring out how to do a piece. So when you, so you're not a, a, a big resin caster person. So let's describe this process. When you uh, think of an idea, where are you grasping for your figures? Where are you finding them? How do you deal with all that? Yeah, I mean, my favorite part of toy making is toy hunting. Like I yep. love going into a store that, you know, ideally just has a few dirty, like, plastic cases of Hell toys yeah. in the back and i'm like they have all these you know they do a nice job of setting up their toys in glass case, cases and i'm like hey do you have any loose toys and they're like yeah maybe in the back and yep. you know so then that's when i love to come up with ideas is right there in the middle of it grabbing it looking at a figure seeing what i see in it that i could turn it into that obviously doesn't always work with some of like the quick turnaround things i like to do so i have a few drawers full of toys that are readily available <laughs> yeah the drawers full of toys i'm i'm glad that you said that because like sometimes i feel like i'm out of out of line almost because i got drawers and boxes and it's perfect order yeah it is oh yeah it's bad because in and the then, back of your head you've got the idea yeah yeah like even if it, i know that the p- potential of a toy when i see it too even if yeah. it's like i don't have an idea for this but I love the, you know, these, like the pants on this are perfect for like a normal person. That's what I look for. Like, you know, there's a lot of toys out there that are not conducive to turning into something else, but there have been some great ones over the years that are absolutely perfect for that. So that's kind of what I keep an eye out for, but also I've gotten much more creative with turning a toy into another that you would have no idea what it was from the beginning, which is fun to take a, um a figure that was covered in grenades or guns all these accessories and tool belts and things like that and then it's like oh no he's just wearing a t-shirt and jeans now so that there is a lot you know i like i like going both i don't want something to be too easy every now and then i'll get called out for a straight repaint from some of the old heads on uh on instagram yeah but either way like there's i still saw something else in it that i wanted to turn it into and uh either way it's fun yeah. And I mean, there's that weird, I talk about this with every toy artist, there's that weird uh, camp. So you're either on the far end with like death by toys, where you're just finding stuff and throwing it in blisters, which I love, because yeah. he is so creative. And that's its own art. Or you're on the other end where you're like resin casting only. Yeah. But I love these middle ground, like you take pieces that exist and add to them or people that do both like that, that seems way more interesting right now. Totally. And I think that I, like when I got into it, I didn't know how people did them. I thought everything was just casted. Like I didn't understand that people were doing kit bashing or were just repainting old figures or, um, and I think that people that buy toys for me, they don't know that it's not like being hand sculpted from the beginning. And I think that that's actually interesting. I'm not like pulling a fast one on them. I think that they see me turn a GI Joe into their uncle Jerry, but it didn't matter to them that they, they don't know that that was the case. They just see uncle Jerry in the end. So I think that's a pretty funny thing. Yeah. It's a little bit of toy magic, like movie magic. Toy magic. Yeah, toy magic. It's that, it almost feels like in Wizard of Oz, like that talking head behind. Behind the curtain, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like some of the toys that have come, that I've seen produced are just so incredible. And it's like, and then I see people and I'm like, man, it's hard to put people to a toy because some of these toys are so good. Totally. Yeah. Which is why some of the artists absolutely blow my mind when I see what they're coming up with and how the likeness to an actual actor or things like that is just so impressive to me. So you, you're talking about uh, the old heads and sometimes they'll get on you or like you're talking about uh, doing all this kit bashing. How long have you been doing this? How how many years? (laughs) Like, like a year, like a year that I've been making toys. Yeah. Okay. Cause uh, I actually got, um, I, I'd started just before like the pandemic, I think last year, I could okay. probably go back and figure out when I started posting my first toys. But even when I posted a toy, it was just like, Oh, I did this. I don't know that I'm going to do this. I just wanted to try it, had a funny idea, 
put it out there. And now, you know, and then that kind of evolved into wanting to just make them, but I then got furloughed from my job for a little bit. So I had like yeah. three months that I knew I was going to have a lot of free time on my hands. And I just really went into it um, full throttle and then ended up getting my job back. So I, I haven't been, you know, I can't do full twice full time, unfortunately, but um, yeah. maybe someday, I don't know, maybe someday. Yeah. I, so you, you started uh, like during pandemic time and all that stuff. What were, what are some of the things that you first started creating? Do you remember those? Yeah. Um, and why, I guess, like, what was the, to- why drawing and why, or like why d- the draw to toys? It's a good question. I, uh, like the only toy person I knew about was Stuckboard because I knew yeah. about him like years ago. And that was like, I knew of him as an artist, but I knew that something that he did was toys. Um, but I didn't really recognize there was a whole world behind it until I started, I think collect, I've been collecting his toys for years and then started to post them and then realize, Oh, there's other people that collect stuff toys. And then realizing, Oh, there's other people that make these toys, which was kind of a weird, I thought it was a stuff thing for, you know, for a while. Um, so I think that's kind of how I then, yeah, I just found out about other artists, found out that, you know, with Suck Lords, um, like he started doing these rack toys, which are his releases where it's like, that is either straight repaints or kit bashes, or he was just throwing figures in, yeah, you know, as they were, and then creating a card that kind of brought them to life. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of when I was like, oh, maybe I could figure this out. Um, yeah. So how many... Suck Lord toys you got? That's a good question. I think I've got like, I think I've got like 50 or 60 total toys, oh. but I think I've got like 40 of them are probably Suck Lord. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. Okay. So you've got some like one of ones then. You've got some hardcore releases. Yeah. Those were almost my favorite. Like the rack toys that he would do, like he, I, like he didn't even he would put them up and if somebody bought one, he was oftentimes taking them off. Like you wouldn't, so if you were, yeah, you might've bought one and it was on the website for 30 seconds and no one has ever seen that toy. I thought that was so cool to me. And I, I think he was doing that when he was using logos that he knew he would get in trouble for posting on a website. Yep. So I have like this amazing, um, it's like Han Solo and it's, he's like in the full, like Arctic kind of like, garb a a picture from star wars and just the north face logo and to me that is like so perfect yeah and also yeah i bought it and he removed it from the website 10 seconds later i was like oh shit maybe i maybe i didn't buy it or maybe there was an issue buying it or whatever but no he just didn't want anyone to see the north face logo and then that's like in my collection And, and then me reposting that when i was posting toys i was collecting is the only existence of that on the internet. It's not him. Like he doesn't post yeah. every toy he makes. Oh, and hell it, no. I, I wish that someone had made sure that, and maybe he has this and maybe him and DKE need to work together in the long run to have a coffee table book of all of his one-offs so that they do exist somewhere in history. But I also love the idea that I have a few that no one's ever seen, you know? Yeah. I think I have one Suck Lord piece yeah, And every once in a while, he'll, I mean, I haven't seen him do it in a while, but he will get on and he does his whole suck Lord shenanigans. Right. And yeah. then he's like, okay, I got to fucking pay rent. Let's I'll post toys. Yes. And I yes. was like, and he started posting them. And then at the end, he's like, if someone buys it, it's gone. Yeah. And so exactly. Im- immediately, like I, I picked up, uh, I found what's, so what's cool about what you're talking about this, like he, he'll just find images. He, the one I picked up was a Greedo. Uh, why am I struggling with the words right now? A Greedo uh, mold or a Greedo cast. And yep. it was on the cover of a, what looks like a, some Russian space film. And it was Russian star Wars is what he called it. Amazing. And what was like, yeah, I was like immediately I'll buy it. Like, that's amazing. Uh, cost me an arm and a leg. I, I don't. I didn't care at the moment. Yeah. And I found the image that he used on the backer board online. Whoa. Okay. And so I was like, 
at first I was disheartened. And then I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like that's dope. Yes. I'm with you. I definitely had times when I would be like, oh wait, he didn't do anything to this toy Yeah, (laughs) early on. Like, I think one of the, you know, some of the first ones I bought, I was like, oh man, he must, so cool that he's making these. And then that slowly getting more of them and being like, oh yeah, he didn't do yeah. anything to this, but he doesn't pretend to. And he's fully honest that, like you said, you guys are going to pay my rent this month because I'm going to yeah. drop 25 toys. They're going to cost 55 to 75, $85 each. Yeah. And they're going to sell out in 10 minutes. And then we, we all buy them. It's he, genius. It's oh, amazing. Did you see he did a drop not that long ago that I immediately, like I tried to do some math on. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm not good at math. So it was yeah. tough. <laughs> but he dropped, it was like Suck Lord through the ages. Do you remember that? Yeah, exactly. Like roaring 20s. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then each one was like 45 bucks or something like right. that. And I think just basic math, it ended up coming out to like four grand or something like that. And it was like, you made Sold that out. in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, what the hell am I doing as a toy artist? Look, what I know. And forty five dollars is so reasonable for anything that the Suck Lord touches. Yeah, you know? is there a reason that there's that much clout going on there? Like, as far as jumping up to other prices, you mean like, or yeah, I, I mean, because he could he sells the gar- like the literal trash, and yeah. so like, is there a reason that you think it goes up and down? I think that like with the one-offs, he, he just was kind of like establishing those as maybe should be higher tiered. I think those were like probably like, but he would be, you know, one might be like 40 bucks and he'd be like, I don't know why this is 40 bucks. And then it would show up at my door and it would be like this big. And I'd yeah. be like, Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there was definitely like a range to his, the one-offs. And then when he does a release, I think he just makes them a little more, reasonable and he knows that he's producing 10 of each i don't know but i mean to me that should be more because you're doing more work to on each one you know like he still well i don't know he doesn't maybe he wasn't hand painting everything but maybe he just decided that that's what was fair and he's not really like he's not putting 200 dollars on them and everyone would be like probably paying for it he's yeah. just Making sure he can pay rent. Maybe he starts with what his rent costs and works backwards and says, this is what I need. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, you, you design all these figures, are you in like conventions? I've seen you, you were in a toy show, uh, slug toys, the Ikea one. Yeah. Uh, little ones. Are you in like other conventions and stuff? Yeah, I've got, well, I got into, um, what is it? Gallery 1988. Are you familiar with in LA? I, don't know that I've heard that gallery. It's one that I just had randomly gotten invited to, and it was one that they accepted one-offs. So mm. it was perfect for me. And I, I, I think I had had a few um, toys that I hadn't sold, or maybe I had. I, you know, you see me. I do auctions on Instagram, and yeah. sometimes people pay at the end, and sometimes they don't. And then I don't, I don't repost them. I just keep the toys, and then so that worked out perfectly for a show they were having. Um, so I was just able to give some of the toys from that I had left, you know, just on my shelves here to be able to put into that. Um, and I might've made a couple, um, new ones, but yeah, like, um, the DK con stuff is always, he's looking for short runs of stuff, which makes perfect sense. It doesn't, you know, it sells generally sells better that way. It's easier for him to promote it that way. Money wise, it probably makes sense for everyone involved. Um, so yeah, so I've definitely missed out on a couple of shows that I've been invited to just because I don't have that ability to do short runs of stuff. And um, that's a bummer. I, I wish I could. And I yeah. think that we just figured out what might be a way around that is, is you know, doing some collab work where that wouldn't, that would be fun to be in the show. So we'd be doing that probably not as a big money maker, but just so we could both be in that show and, and get to share our work. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think you're right on the, like, it's a bummer when people do, when they expect runs sometimes, because in my head, like a run is the same figure over and over again, but also a run would be like, if I had all these crazy ideas for the same movie and I put all of those out, right. I think that would be such a fun run as well, but yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that you could get away with that. I think that if, like, maybe you found a way to make the card have some kind of theme that brought some parity between, you know, yeah. between the run. In my head, um, I feel like the way that I do it is I'd take, like, Tom Hanks, and I would just, I'd put a, hell yeah. like. One, ten Hanks, but ten different movies. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, I did, like, the, I've already produced one of them. I did uh, Forrest Gump, and I put a bench in there. And I said, reenact yes. your own scene, no imagination required. And then Perfect. you could do a, a ball for Wilson and just keep going. Yeah, that's good. I like accessory toys. Oh, yeah. Like, I think part of me is like, oh, no, I want a figure. I want it to be yeah. like a character. And I think that I, that's just because I like like people in that way. But I'll definitely, some of the funniest shit I've seen is probably some, you know, very small effort but very cool yeah. accessory toy that i like i put in uh i tried to put in the least amount of effort on one of the toys that dke asked me to do and i yeah. like i don't know what was going on uh, it was the back to the future show yeah and uh i chose botched to it botched in the future or something yeah. <laughs> and i made the figure out of hot glue amazing and i just i painted it up and i threw it in there because it was like how like how stupid could I make someone look that it looks like time warping just messed up their body? Yeah. And so and he immediately he looked at it, he goes, I think this is super glue. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yeah, man, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. guilty as charged. Yeah. And he That's awesome. like it was a cool moment because he was like, Oh, taking a page out of Janky's book. And I was like, Yeah, I, I yeah. want this toy to look like it's not worth it. No, above it. Sometimes I'll make, I'll, I'll put way too much time. Like a toy that should be completely simple is yeah. always the one that takes me the longest time. And sometimes the most difficult ones are the ones that I get lucky with and I match my colors perfectly and I end up doing clay, you know, yeah. sculpting something perfectly the first time and not having to break it and restart it, which is usually what I have to do. So yeah, <laughs> it all depends. So you sculpt then. So you may not like do resin and stuff, but to add to these figures, you for yeah, sure sculpt. I do. I'm not doing, I'm not doing faces. I'm okay. not doing, <laughs> I'm not doing like parts. I'm doing things like turning short sleeve shirts into long sleeve shirts or and I'm like doing things like stuff, right? Yeah. Hats, hair, beards, mustache, like things that I need to get it from what it looks like to what I want it to look like. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't even attempted like a full face sculpt or anything like that. I'll leave that for, uh, is it readful or readful as you read? Uh, it? I because... always thought it was readful, but then when you read it and other people are writing about it, it seems yes. like it's read. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Exactly. I, I say readful in my heads, but I think it's like, a. I already forget what the reference is. Um, nostalgic Nez yep. told, told me what the reference was the other day and I already f forgot what it was, but anyways, <laughs> but I think it is readful. Anyways, I mean, that guy's doing like face sculpts and putting out like four or five toys a week. Sometimes it's yeah. like uh, mind boggling. It's amazing. It's like, it almost makes you feel like, am I not chasing this hard enough or oh, are other people just so good at it that it takes no effort? Totally. When I, when I put away my paints and go to bed at 11 and I'm like, see him post something. I'm like, Oh, do I, should I just stay up? Should yep. I stay up late? Should I put in the, put in the hours? Yeah. This morning. So I, I'm trying to cut corners. I I'm just always <laughs> trying to cut corners just yep. for time's sake. And so I found this, uh, like in resin port smooth on is the brand. And so I, I right. found yep. North star 16 and it's like quick acting, uh, silicone. Yeah. So I was trying to get all these things molded up as quickly as I possibly could last night didn't shake the bottle before I started. So all of them came out tacky and gross. Uh, so I just wasted however much money. And like, I got yeah. up at five this morning. I was like, I got, I, I want to knock this out, but I'm, yeah. it's frustrating because I know that there's other people that didn't waste it and got it out the night before. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, it's thanks the time. for guys. Yeah. Dano has told me that he, he's like, I treat this like a job. I get yeah. up early and I do it and I put in the time and that's, uh, it's not the most, you know, novel idea, but he holds himself to that. And that's exactly what makes him successful. Like I, 
say, oh, like, you know, I have a day job. First of all, he, he does as, as well, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I can't always find that extra time. But even when I do, I'm not always saying this is my toys time. And I don't always, you know, force myself into it the way that, you know, the big guys do. And that's why they're so successful. So, yeah. I, have you found yourself, this is going to like, you have your own day job. You found yourself like, oh, I need to write this toy idea down immediately. Oh, big time. I mean, I also, this is my kitchen table is where I do my toy work and it's also where I do my day job. So sometimes it is a little bit hectic trying to yep. separate the two and I might, you know, know I need to print a card that I needed to finish or take my lunch break to package up some toys that I know I need to get in the mail that day and get to the post office with. So, yeah, I for sure, uh, like right now, so I'm at work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I love that. And like, or all like I was editing another podcast interview and uh, I had people come in and they were talking to me about work and I can keep it in one ear. Cause I'm just checking for like errors in the podcast or whatever. Yeah. And so it's like, sometimes those things are dual moving lines and it's so scary. They, they right. should never blur though, which is like, I never want totally. those things to blur. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's the weekends just weren't enough for me time-wise and like interest in this weird passion that we have like it's it just wasn't enough time for me to create the amount of work that I want to do and it's fun to like posting toys is awesome like who doesn't like to get to share their work and it's like I'll have like two or three weeks ago where I haven't completed something I kind of like bummed out like I didn't I didn't get it even right now like I, I didn't didn't get something done this weekend that I wanted to be able to post you know so it's like there is kind of a the weekends just isn't enough. So yeah, my point is I try to put in some time during the week and be like, no, this at five o'clock. Yes, my day job is done, but I need to paint these two toys that I've been working on. Yeah, and then I think maybe you can like I don't know connect to this, but there's even times where like family or something will be like, hey, like let's hang out or let's do this, and you're like, I got to work with toys, and I know how stupid that sounds, but I got to do this. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah especially on like a Saturday when that's when I was saving my time, you know, I knew that, yep. okay, I won't have time this week given my work schedule, my meeting schedule, whatever it is Saturday, that's my wake up and go time. And then someone's like, want to go play tennis. Do you want to go and go for a hike? You want, it's like, now I have to, I have to finish this toy, which yeah. is such a confusing thing to try to explain to someone. But so how do you, how do you get around or like, how do you explain it to people that this is what you do? Cause I, Good question. it is so de- degrading how people talk about what I do. Like they, yeah. they always oh, reference yeah. it like, Oh, he does toys. Like mm-hmm. bitch, don't say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've gotten it all the toy guy. I mean, I'm the toy guy at work. Yeah. But the thing is at some point, these people are going to have a place where they'll like to talk about what we're doing in yeah. a cool way. And it will come up that I don't know how many people need toys, but I've had times when people's jobs were looking for or like um, a unique, this is, this has happened multiple times where they're looking for like a unique gift for their business partners. And then they're like, yep. oh, okay. And they don't want to admit it, but they're like, how cool would a custom toy be for, or like their employee of the month type thing or whatever it is. And I've done a few like that where they're like coming to me to ask for the work, even though they, you know, make fun of it in lightheartedly yeah. make fun of what I've been doing for the last year, but for sure. Yeah, that's, that's Yeah. Have you run into, so you do a lot of custom work <laughs> and people I do, yeah. constantly are asking for custom figures, right? Yeah. People love it. And yeah. I, and I, I've said yes too many times to be completely honest. Like I've said yes to it now that I've got, so I've just continued to create them, mm-hmm. but it's so hard to do. It's so hard to yeah. put in, as we're saying, like it's hard enough to find time and like positive energy, especially with what's going on in the world to put towards this hobby, let alone when it's for someone that you don't have like a personal attachment to and you don't yeah. have a personal attachment to the creativity behind it. And it almost forces me to put in more energy to make sure that 
they're happy with it because I kind of question it all along the way. I think like, oh, this doesn't look as much like them. And they're always happy in the end because to them, there is that kind of toy magic thing like we're talking about, like, oh, it does look like their brother. And that's enough. That's exactly what they wanted. And obviously, as we know, the card is at least 51%. The card is what pulls together a decent yeah. toy is a great card and it becomes a great toy. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. The card sometimes takes me way longer than the figure, which pisses me off so much more. Yeah. I mean, let alone the pack is packaging, not the worst part of toy making. Yeah, I mean the what we've <laughs> encountered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we have. I haven't even gotten to the stage of packaging because. Yeah. Full disclosure to the people at home: we're looking for a blister that's perfect for what we're working on, and that's a huge pain. But also for me, like, also, I, I mean, I can complain about my space, but I think that that's part of the reason that I hate packaging. It's like I don't have just a big space where I'm using like a straight edge and my mat board cutter and having to redo cards or getting glue everywhere. It's just, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. No real complaints. Did you, you ordered from that company though? I did. Yeah. Well, I also ordered from the sample one. Okay. That was like, (laughs) I've just put down my company name at circle at plot toys asked for X, Y, and Z of the blisters that I think will be perfect for it. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know if they see that and they're like, this guy's useless to us and yeah. maybe it's not worth it to them, but that's how they made it sound. It's like they could, uh, you know, offer package sampling, sample packaging. So we'll see. So, Hey, cross our fingers that that yeah. comes out by I the know. end of the year. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely, it's <laughs> going to be, it's definitely going to be a 2021 release. Yeah. I think I, fr- I get so frustrated uh, with that, with packaging. So I don't know, do you print your own backs and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I use a, like a photo printer, like a nice Canon photo printer that I, I like the photo quality book. Yeah. But that's kind of what I've gotten into. I, I love, like, I don't, I like other people's, you know, kind of take on that as well, where it's has kind of like a slight ring to it, or maybe it has a slight, like maybe the colors aren't as contrasted and it kind of looks more like actual packaging, but uh, I kind of like the photo quality stuff. Like that's kind of my, I just finished this guy. And this is like one where I thought, I thought like, you know, like an an image quality version of that to me is like, just so cool to be able to. I love that. To make. But, but Readful, for example, would have done like, a, you know, I don't know if his art is hand painted or if he's figured out a way to manipulate images to make it look hand painted, but yeah. like that would be like come, become like an art piece. Whereas I kind of like photo quality stuff is kind of cool to me. But yeah, when I, and I think designing that and like getting all that going. So I take all mine like here's just an inside look at what yucko does i I take all mine to fedex ship and print because they can get the colors as close to what photoshop has those colors and so it's like um so i'll like i just spend time doing that but it takes time like i gotta drive and make sure they're open and all that kind of bull crap yeah i was doing that before you know covid hit and then i couldn't go i couldn't go there so like i just ended up buying a printer and that was a huge learning curve like th- to have them do it was amazing and I do I do definitely try to print before I excuse me I try to print before I paint so that my color matching I can't change the print once it's done but I can yeah. change the toy to yeah. kind of look more like it so a little tip for folks out there print yeah. before <laughs> you paint so you you talked about collecting you have a massive assortment of suck lord what are some other pieces that you're looking into collecting or like, that's what you collect? That's a good question. I mean, Sucklord is definitely my, my favorite. He is your bank out there. Yeah. Yeah. I just love like his shit, like the, the, everything about him, I think is why it's so interesting to me. Like he's, he, he, he plays an asshole, but he's not an asshole not at all (laughs) he's not but that's his thing and and he 
you know, uses that in the language that he uses. You're an asshole for buying this is kind of his tagline, right? And, yeah. And yet I bought pieces from him and then reached out when something got broken in the mail and he couldn't have been a nicer guy about it. You know, like yeah. he's plays this, this artist that you wouldn't think would do something like that, but he's a great guy. It's from, from, from my understanding, I actually met him years ago um, at an art show in New York before I started collecting toys, before I knew anything about toys, but um, great, funny, normal, mostly normal guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he was the one that helped me figure out how to do the backer boards for my figures. Awesome. Cause I thought, I mean, this could be dumb or whatever, but I thought you printed on the cardboard. I thought that was just what you did. Totally. And this, and this guy Same. was like, he, he was kind of like towing that line of being an asshole or being sweet. And he was like, yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah. That's not how you do it. This is how you do it. Yep. <laughs> so That's awesome. I have a couple things. So one, cool. what's to come? Like, what do you have come in that maybe you want to talk about or like one of the million things going on in your head? What do you hope to release? Uh, and then two, uh, how do people get to you? Like, where can we find your figures? How do they reach out to you? That kind of stuff. Cool. That's easy. Cause I don't have a website. Yeah. I just, I just have the Instagram sir collect a lot on Instagram. Um, what's next? I, yeah, this one I just showed you that that's hot off the press. I haven't, um, which I'm not even going to describe it for the podcast. I want that to come out and everyone's just like, Oh, oh right. Is no. that bad radio? That's bad radio. Cause I'm showing you something <laughs> on screen here. <laughs> Didn't even describe it. Hey, we'll say it. It's it. Part of the bootleg radio scene. Yeah. Perfect. Um, no, that's good. That's so, so that was now maybe it's even worse to double down on the conversation about that, but this was a toy that I was going to do a short run of for in action. Okay. But I just didn't get, you know, someone I found out about got invited to very late, didn't get it done, didn't want to force it, yeah. <laughs> didn't want to try to stay up all night and make, um, but uh, it's Miranda at, at Clutter. She had said, like, you could do oh, a run yes. of, of three, which sounded like a magic, you know, an, a manageable number for me. But it's not. So, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. The, the way, like, even this was a trickier figure than I planned for. So one is taking me a long time, but in general, yeah, to go to three is a lot for my brain and my schedule and yeah. things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be getting those out eventually, or maybe it will just become a one-off again because it was it's easier to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have anything uh, crazy in the works. Okay. I, I have a half, you know, a handful of commissions I'm working on for, some fun stuff, some, some that are, I've tried to steer a little bit clear of straight up. Like this is my, I'd love a figure of my dad because I just, you know, meeting people's expectations on that is, is tough. And like I said, it's hard for me to prioritize when it's, I'm not really attached to the project, but I've got a couple commissions for uh, musicians and um, my buddy's hot sauce company, shout out Nukes hot sauce. Hell yeah. Um, Just cause that's something I, can get behind that's a commission that i want to you know back want to put energy into and, and yeah. we'll put out a good product on um and then just the usual uh one-off saying that there's a couple of shows coming up this summer i'm excited for again at that that gallery i mentioned um that i haven't figured out ideas for but they come up with some some themes that are like general enough that you you can figure something out you know never too specific but give you a little framework to work with so that's my plan. That's a, that's about all I got going on. Yeah. Sir collect a lot on Instagram. That's where you can find me. Love that. As a side note, now that you've already shouted out nukes hot sauce, I might reach out to him to sponsor the episode. Perfect. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Love so, that. uh, so what does the process look like? Let's say, um, cause I've dealt with that, uh, like, Oh, I want a figure of my dad and I, I, I'm the same way. The way no. that I worked around it where I, I was like, okay, then, send me a photo of your dad in the weirdest outfit you've seen him in or like some goofy yeah. thing that way I yeah. know, like I'm not making him I'm making that totally totally um so if like let's say a customer's like hey I want a custom what's that process look like so we can make sure that people aren't too nervous to reach out to you yeah I mean I, not to sound like a complete asshole but my dms I'm horrible with I've gotten like a few reposts 
over the years that put a hundred people asking me to make them into toys in my DMs. Yeah. So I'm not good with that. So if you're hearing this, sir, collect a lot toys at gmail.com is where boom, you can, boom, boom. You can much more easily find me. Um, yeah. yeah. And tell me, I do like, you just kind of spelled it out. Give me an idea. Tell me about your dad. If you want me to turn him into a toy, tell me yeah. what his alter ego would be that he would find funny that he would, you know, help him bridge the gap between, a toy that kind of looks like him and something that he would absolutely get a kick out of, you know? So that's kind of where I'd, I'd try to still steer people with that. Love that. Thanks for giving me your time. I can't wait for our little collab to come out. 